Council, and it is my pleasure to welcome folks here in the sanctuary and folks who are joining us online to this night of carols and lights, of readings, of lessons, of beautiful harp and flute music. As we begin, I just have a few announcements to make. First, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for wearing your mask so that we can be here together. Um, I did want to mention that today is, um, many folks have purchased and honored us with these wonderful poinsettias. If you are somebody who had planned to take them home, um, we are doing this on an honor system. So if you have indicated that you would like to take them home, you may do so tonight at the end of the service. Please simply come forward and uh, take a plant for, um, for going home with you. We also, I also wanted to mention something about candles. As, um, as, we, as we come to the end of the service, we will be singing Silent Night and we will be lighting candles. We'll be sharing the light of Christ. And one of the things that we pondered over was in the age of COVID, how could we help you to turn off the candles without blowing? And we couldn't quite figure it out. So we're gonna still blow out candles, but it'll be at the very end of the service. Um, if you're somebody who feels comfortable snuffing them out otherwise, do so, but please know that it's understood that we have to lower our masks and turn off the candles at the end of the service but that will be at the very end of the service, so we intend to be leaving the space. Otherwise, um, we just, I just want to invite folks. Again, we are worshiping this Sunday. We'll have a simple service with some carol singing um, this Sunday, the 26th. We will not have midweek meditations, and our choirs are not rehearsing in the coming two weeks. Those are my announcements for tonight, and I just welcome you to this wonderful service. Let us celebrate the birth of Christ. Thank you. 
Shepherds hear them say, Christ comes down to earth this day. Glory be to God on high. Blessed are all beneath the sky. Midnight slumber. Lights the stall. 
flash our lives to win, came to earth from heaven's throne, mortal sin to bear alone. Glory be to God on high. Blessed are all beneath the sky. Won't you join your voices with mine as we together are called to worship on this night to welcome the Christ child. Please join me by reading the words in your bulletin in bold. In this silent night, we ponder your mystery with Mary and Joseph, O oh God. On this holy night, we come with the shepherds to worship. We come seeking Christ's light. On this night of joy for the world, we sing praises with choirs of angels. We come seeking Christ's light. In the darkness of this night, we celebrate the light of the world. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Our second lesson is from Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those who living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
The third lesson foretells the birth of Jesus. It's from Luke, first chapter, 26 through 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Our fourth lesson tells us of the birth of Jesus, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration that had taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee in Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
blessings. Also Luke chapter 2, 8 through 16. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Why 
Our sixth lesson this evening, the Magi visit the Messiah. Matthew 2, 1 through 6 and 9 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, this he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet was written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are but are no, by no means um, least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
Here we are on Christmas Eve. And we hear the lessons tell us the story of Jesus' birth. But when the writer of the Gospel of John introduced Jesus, he didn't start with the birth story at all. Now Mark told us about John the baptizer, actually baptizing Jesus. That's where he started the story. The Gospel of Luke told us about Mary and Joseph and the manger and shepherds and sheep and an angelic host. Matthew gave us genealogy and Joseph and the Magi, all of them sharing the beginning of Jesus' story in a different way. And John, John is the poet among them. He called us to look for the dawning of the perfect light. From thousands of years ago, John's words echo in this night. The word became flesh and made his home among us. The light came to his people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome the light. These are the words with which John starts his story of the life of Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I don't know about you, but in December, in this part of the globe, who isn't aware of the light and darkness this time of year? This past week, on Tuesday night, our session met, and someone heralded some good news. It was Tuesday, and they said, from here on out, the nights start to get shorter. And somebody else whispered, but only by a minute. And everybody else chuckled and said, well, we'll take it. Every minute that we can have. Maybe this year, because it's been milder, no snow. Well, no, we've had some snow, and then today we had some more snow. Or maybe because of milder weather or because people are sort of down in the dumps, I think that folks in my neighborhood have more lights on their houses. Some have white lights and greenery and candles in the windows. Others have flashing lights and twinkling and twirling lights. And other homes have that whole slew of characters, you know, those big ballooned and lit up characters in the night. Some displays are subtle, and some are, well, obnoxiously overdone. But maybe not. Who can have too much light? The Gospel writer of John was on to something when he lifted up the idea of the lights dawning in the darkness. He offered us this metaphor so that we could embrace Jesus' story. We humans know that we need the light to survive, to live and flourish. Maybe you were like me and you had that third grade science experiment where you grew grass either under a bushel and one under a bushel and one in the light, and the one under the bushel didn't grow and it was yellow and tangled and the other one was green and lush. We learned light gives us life. We human beings and all of life need light. Light is warmth and growth, it's goodness. And the opposite, the opposite of light is darkness. In the shadows, we're afraid. It's often cold when there's no light. In the dark, we get lost and lonely. The writer of John wanted us to know that Jesus was the light of the world. This is the light that we celebrate on this night. Christ's light burns bright and it chases away all the darkness. The Reverend John Bucking, um, Buchanan, Pastor Emeritus of Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago, preached one Christmas Eve saying, everyone, I suspect, has known darkness or knows darkness of some kind. The loss 
of someone dear. Fear about what's going to become of us. Illness. Anxiety about our families, our nation, our future. There are many kinds of darkness. And the message of Christmas is that we are not alone in the darkness. Douglas John Hall said, God is alongside you in the darkest place of your darkest night. This is the good news of Christmas. These are dark days, and we must celebrate and trust in the light, the light that God has given us. And tonight, the lessons remind us that God gave us light at the very beginning of creation. The physical light of the sun is a gift from God. And wisdom from the prophets that speak to us of old is revelation, light offered to us from God. And yes, the stories of angels in the night sky and a shining bright star remind us that Christ is the light, a gift given to us by God. Tonight, remember John's words. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not been overcome by the light, has been overcome by the light. The invitation at Christmas to us, to you, to me, to all of us, is to live our lives in the light. The light of God's redeeming love. The perfect light of Christ. The invitation of Christmas to you and to me is to trust that God came into this world and comes into our lives each and every day. Our lives and the lives of this world. The light of God shines for you, for us. Nothing, not hate, not misguided power, not lies, not death itself, can bury or burn out the light of God's love. Nothing, nothing. When we live in the light of God, we know and we trust God's love. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and in him was life. And life was the light of all people, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Dear friends, this is the good news on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and every day. Thanks be to God. Will you join your hearts with mine as we pray? O oh Jesus, the Christ, holy child, glory of God revealed, by starlight we first saw your face, and now by candlelight we sing your praise. Though the night is long, you are our hope. Though the path is dark, you lead the way. The darkness has many names. Pandemic, division, selfish pride, injustice, bigotry, fear. Remind us always of the truth of your prophets, that your light overcomes the shadow. Challenge us on this celebration of your birth to seek your light and to seek to be your light bearers into this world. On this Christmas Eve, we pray. We pray for all who are ill, all who mourn, all who hunger, all who are without shelter, and for all who struggle in body, mind, or spirit to know hope and peace. Lord, bring them your light. By your spirit, help us to shine with the brightness of your truth and to share the warmth of your great love so that all may believe, rejoice, and give thanks 
for you are the light of the world. Help us have eyes to see all the places that you shine in our lives. Open our hearts, our ears, our hands, that we might know that you shine right with us, giving us strength that we need, giving us vision for what we need to do next, giving us hope that we, not need, that we need not live in shadow. Call us to places where your love is born anew, where kindness prevails, where justice flourishes, and where peace reigns. Send us out to serve, sharing good news of great joy, and praising you through the unity of the Holy Spirit. Holy God, all glorious giver of grace, you are the light shining in the darkness. Fill us with the light and life of Christ, through whom all things were made, so that we may be faithful disciples, bearing witness to your grace and truth, through Christ your word made flesh. Amen. Our seventh and final lesson. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.
May the light that began at creation continue through the witness of the prophets that has come to fullness at the birth of Christ Jesus. Be in your hearts and your minds this evening. As you go from this place, may your spirits be filled with joy and hope for God's precious light has been given to you. Go in peace and know that God's peace always goes with you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. 